How much does it hurt Florida State that Greedy Vance is hitting the transfer portal? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Today's show is going to focus on the transfer portal. It opens up this next Tuesday, and a player is already going to jump in, and that is Nickelback Greedy Vance from Florida State. He is a transfer from Louisville. Been a really good player. We're going to talk about him here in just a minute. First off, though, I do have another little announcement for later in the show. The last part of it is going to be Gator Hayton. I finally figured out a way to put all this into one segment. So you want to stick around to the end. Florida deserves it. It it is unbelievable to me just how bad that program is. And I'm finally just going to do a full segment on it here on Locked On Seminoles. But first, let's talk about Greedy. Who is he? What's he done? Why is he important to Florida State and why it's a loss? And why the transfer portal giveth and taketh away? So here's the deal. Greedy was the nickel last year, and nickel spot, in my opinion, and quite a few other people that I speak with in the college coaching profession, it's as hard as it gets from a physical standpoint. you got to take a beating because you're in the run game more because you're closer to the edge, and you're also going to be a guy that's going to play against big tight ends sometimes in the screen game or running backs when they throw it to some of these little slot receivers. They put them back in the stack formation or whatever. You can't get to them. you got to go through a guy that's bigger. So you got to have the skills of a corner. You got to have the toughness, like an outside linebacker. And you also just got to be a guy that can really, really run because you're going to be on your tippy toes all day going downhill. And then all of a sudden you got to turn around out of the blue and you got to run with a guy on a fade route. It's hard. So that's why you don't see many freshmen and sophomores play this spot anymore. Younger guys, when an opposing team sees it, you know, they see Vance, they, they avoided him. He's, he was really good, and I'll go over his stats here in a second. But Florida State is losing a really good player because he was physical, he was consistent, and he could play in all different phases, screen game, run game, and traditional coverage. Those players are rare. Those freshmen and sophomores that I've talked about quite a bit on this show, they're going to be good players. I do not want to see them anywhere near the nickel position their first two years. I do not care how much talent they have. I do not care how much size they have. I do not care what their recruiting ranking is. Experience, experience, experience at the nickel spot. So FSU brought in Earl Little. He's the kid from Alabama, Patrick Sertain, at one point coached him. He was at American Heritage. Great football prospect. But last year he had two tackles and eight games at Alabama. Then he transferred. He comes over to the Knowles. He's allegedly competing or right there with, ahead, whatever, a greedy And I guess it just hasn't gone well. Like, you know, sometimes guys just want all the reps. I'm speculating. I don't know the backstory. And quite frankly, I do not care. If Greedy's leaving, that's his decision. It is more and then welcome for him to do so. But this is not good for Florida State. You cannot have enough DBs. That's always been the signature. That's still the same, and especially at nickel. So here are some of the stats for Greedy that I find really interesting. Last year, he took 307 snaps for the Knowles. You know what? It's a mix of where he played at, but it's just really hard for me to like looking at his targets and everything. 40.7% of the time, a pass was thrown in his direction. It was completed. That is low, man. Like he's good. And a lot of the guys in the slot that he plays against, those are short throws. Those are hitches, slants. Those are little rub routes. Those are screens, et cetera. And he's still at 40.7%. I talked about him quite a bit last year. Like, he's underrated. He's underrated. He does a lot of good things for the Knowles. This hurts. And even if, and, you know, we don't get to see Diddley with these practice reports, and, you know, Norvell doesn't really say anything in these press conferences. He goes out of his way not to name anybody because he doesn't want this. Guy's hitting the portal. Even if we're looking at a situation where Earl Little is not just good but really good, that's still one guy there. With Greedy gone, it impacts Florida State because you got to rotate in and out of the lineup. And what happens when Earl gets banged up? Inevitably, 
when you lose a guy and there's too much depth at a spot because the guy's ticked about it, at least in his eyes, that's always just like, it's the way it rolls. That guy will get banged up. Who will be the Florida State nickel behind Earl? And will it be a guy that's ready for that role at the same level in all three phases? Screen, run, and truly a guy that can play like a coverage corner. Not one, not two of them, all three. Maybe it's Knowles. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe Jabril Rawls. He's a redshirt freshman. There's a lot of different guys you could put there. Uh, I could see them doing something with maybe Ashwin Barker. I'm not sure. They're probably going to work on it between now and the end of fall camp with multiple guys, and they won't tell us anything, of course. But that is not likely to be as good as Greedy Vance. I'm not saying Florida State is screwed because here in just a few minutes, I'm going to talk about how good the secondary is in general. And I think it's got a chance to be a top five secondary nationally, even without him, barring injury. But that is my concern. Losing Greedy Vance is not good. Here are a couple other things to consider with him. Just looking at some of the games, like he was targeted, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six games in a row he was targeted and didn't give up a completion. Those games were Tech, Syracuse, Duke, Wake, Pitt, and Miami. Think about that. Six consecutive games. This is by Pro Football Focus. Greedy, even if they're close to right, let's say there, there was one or two in there. That's extremely good. Between those, I mean, I mean, that, that's over, it was 11 passes in a row. That's insane to have that kind of mark. You cannot lose guys like that and all of a sudden say, ah, we're good. I am concerned about it. We'll talk a little bit here in a minute about the opportunities for Florida State, obviously, to draw in players from the transfer portal. Maybe there's somebody they can go grab, but it's going to be hard to replace greedy Vance for the Florida State Seminoles. Now, before I go too far and everybody just jumps off the bridge, Florida State secondary is really good, and we're going to talk about that in a second. And again, Earl Little is super talented. He was a big-time recruit, four- or five-star guy by everybody coming out of American Heritage in South Florida. So it's not like they're they're void of talent. Don't kid yourself. Myself and Locked On Seminoles, we know that. I just believe that if you've got an advantage somewhere, you got to find a way to keep your guys. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So with that, we're going to talk about the Florida State secondary overall here in just a moment on Locked On Seminoles. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what helps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit available to United States customers only. So how good is Florida State secondary? We can compare in a couple of different ways here. Number one, assuming Greedy would have stayed, obviously it would have been better. But at the same time, without him, you still have, this is my kind of own projection, and I've, I've heard other people's opinions. I've got to mix and match. But it doesn't really matter. They have enough guys. If somebody that I'm about to mention doesn't start, another guy's really good. They've got about eight or nine guys. I'm like, this, this is pretty good, man. These guys can play Georgia. These guys can play Miami. These guys can play Texas. Pick a school. They could go and contribute right away. So this kind of what I have as a guess for some of the guys that are going to start. And again, I expect Earl Little to be the nickel now. So I already talked about him, him and nickel. I love Fentrell Cypress. I think he's got a chance to get paid. Maybe he's not going to be the perfect NFL player, but I think he will. He'll be one of the corners. The guy that's unique is former Miami player, Devontae Brown. He didn't do diddly last year at UM, but they've moved him to safety now that he's transferred to Florida State. Really long, really rangy kid. Had a pretty good career at UCF, transferred to Miami, and now he's with the Knowles. I'm curious about him. Maybe he ends up starting. He's a nice guy. I've met him, so I'm, I'm going to give him the 
the bump and say he's going to end up at safety, but it, you know, maybe it's Ashwin Barker, maybe it's somebody else. They have plenty of options there. The guy on the other side of corner, Ezra Thomas, no doubt about it. I've heard great things about him this spring. He might be Florida State's best player in the secondary, possibly their best player on the defense. He is a dude, and I expect him to be gone after this next year. It's called the National Football League. Shaheen Brown is a pretty good bet to be another guy. He could be a safety for you, could play different roles. He might be somebody that could play that nickel spot too, depending on the team you're going against. Versatile defender has some physicality to him, so I like it. But there's also the depth part of this. Again, these are just kind of guesses, and things can change, and there's injuries. The team you go against every week, it makes it different for the matchups. Florida State secondary is fortunate, even without Greedy Vance. They're going to have a lot of guys. Like Quindarius Jones, I love. I talked about him the other day. He is the perfect example of how Florida State's ability to evaluate. He was, like I think he was the only offer he had, which is bizarre. And he's from Meridian, Mississippi. Big-time talent, in my opinion, 6'1 plus, has a chance to eventually get paid. If he ends up at nickel, if he ends up at free safety, if he ends up just staying in a corner, whatever it is they want to do with him, it doesn't matter. He's a guy that can go and make big plays. Uh, they can play anywhere, really, because he's just that kind of athlete. I already mentioned Barker. I've mentioned Conrad Hussey several times. He played at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale. He's a really smart kid that can run. I think he can play corner. Uh, he'll probably play safety some because they, they definitely have some good corners coming in. I'll talk about them in a second. But that's a really versatile kid, another guy that could potentially at some point, although I don't want him to yet, to end up at that nickel spot. Jabril Rawls, another kid I know. He's from the Pensacola area. It's a redshirt freshman, really long and really athletic. He's a young man that he can play corner or free safety. It wouldn't make any difference. And then there's Kevin Knowles, a guy that's kind of been around forever, plus K.J. Kirkland, another kid I'm high on out of Reigns in Jacksonville. They have a common theme with some of these guys. And I didn't even mention everybody, by the way. Length. Man, Florida State is long in the secondary. It's a great combination of players, and it's why they're interchangeable. Whatever that Sertan has to do this year, let's say – for instance, let's say Brown does start at safety, but he gets banged up. And let's say for whatever reason, Little's banged up too. You might move somebody like Jamari Howard to safety or corner during the season, but you could move Jamari Howard. That's another guy I didn't even mention, at least into the rotation at another spot if somebody's hurt like that. Kai Bates, a true freshman. He could at least help you at corner. You don't want him to start necessarily, but a lot of teams would start Kai Bates as a freshman. They would. He's a dude. He played at Edgewater High School in Orlando. Very, very talented young man. But again, length with both of them. Both of them are over six foot tall. Both of them can hit and both of them can run. Never have enough of those guys. So I'm not as worried about it. They'll figure out how to move the pieces around. Florida State, this, this I know, from a versatility standpoint, it'd be hard for me to imagine that there's even one more secondary in the United States that has as much versatility as the Knowles. So that brings up the big question. Is this or is this not a top five defense in terms of like the secondary specifically? I say it is, even without greedy because of that versatility and the length. I could be wrong and the proof will bear out later in the season, which I've got four games written down here. And these are the only four I really give a crap about. These are the only four. Clemson, Miami, Notre Dame, and Florida. Georgia Tech to a certain degree because it's the first game and they do have a good quarterback. That game gives me some pause. You can put an asterisk by that if you want to go five. But during those games in particular, that's when I think losing not just a good player, but a really versatile one at a critical spot like Greedy concerns me. But the rest of the secondary and the other games, like Florida State has a chance to be top five nationally in defense, even against that schedule. Like playing at Notre Dame is not friendly. Playing at Miami against Cam Ward is certainly not going to be friendly. Clemson has got an experienced quarterback now. It's a junior. That will be difficult. Florida's always a difficult game because it's a rivalry contest. Georgia Tech has a lot of speed at receiver and a veteran quarterback. Those are just some of the things they got to deal with. But again, they at least have the pieces to do it. If there's any other concern I have about Florida State with the secondary, it's the conjunction. How much pass rush are you going to get, et cetera? They should be good there, but I need to see it. It's always a new year. You don't know how things are going to work together. But based on talent, Florida State's down four ought to be pretty good. And I know they lost a great player. Don't get me wrong. Going in the first round of the draft, you know, they, they've got a D in. It's 
going to be called a lot, in my opinion, over the next five years plus in the NFL this week. I get it. I get it. But as long as the pass rush is going to get over 30 sacks this year with the dudes I just mentioned in the secondary, there's no reason to believe that Florida State should not have a top five, at worst, top 10 secondary nationally. And when you do that, it gives you a chance in every game, man, because it leads to more turnovers, more third and longs, and that also, you know, they play off each other. Sometimes it's a coverage sack. Sometimes it's an opportunity for the defense because they're playing downhill and they know it's a pass. They don't even need the coverage to be that good for more than a couple of seconds. Somebody blows through a hole and gets to the QB. Florida State should be pretty good in the defensive pass game, whether you're talking about the front or the back end. And I think that's that's really important. Finally today, we're going to do a little gator hating. I've been talking about this with a couple of people, including Brandon Olson, who runs Locked on Gators. And it's like, I tell him all the time, how can you screw up Florida? It's not that hard of a program to recruit to, et cetera. And I'm going to define for you here on Locked on Seminoles why Florida's football program is, quite honestly, pretty god-awful right now. All right, game time. If you have not downloaded the game time app and you're somebody like me that likes to go to games, concerts, whatever it may be, football, whatever, you should do so. In a couple of clicks, you can take the game time app, type in Florida State Seminoles, type in Atlanta Braves, type in Tampa Bay Rays, whatever it is. If you just want tickets to go to a theater, you can get last minute tickets and zone deals really quick and it's easy. This is not a very difficult app. Like literally search box, type in the name, good to go. And the other bonus, you're going to be able to see your seats because you click on it and it will show you a path from where you would be sitting to the main event itself. Very simple. So with that, make sure that you check out Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's time to talk bad about the Florida Gators because they deserve it. I've researched <clears throat> college football for the majority of my life looking at trends. I just find it interesting. I'm a stat guy. If you put me in a situation that I could only pick four, five, six schools somewhere in there, let's just say five. Brian, which are the five easiest jobs with the right head coach to win a national title? I would put Florida in that. I would put them ahead of Florida State. It's state you. It's in the middle of Florida, and it's in the Southeastern Conference. Pretty darn good setup in Gainesville. So why do they suck? This is just ridiculous. I don't really care who's good and bad year to year. I just call it like it is. But watching Florida for the last several years, except for 2020, Dan Mullen did a really good job that year. That program has been a train wreck. How do you screw up Florida year after year? It's in just incredible. Here are a couple things to think about, though, and I've got four categories, one of which is somewhat to their credit, but it's worked out to their detriment because of the first three. So let's go with those. Number one, their administration and their, and their coaching are about as far apart as they can be. What do I mean by that? Florida has done a terrible job of having the administration be in line with the coach on everything that they need. I mean, they got Jordan Brand, they got the Swamp, you got all these things that are natural. I'm talking about the things outside of that. Allowing the right hires, making sure your NIL, and I'll go into this more in depth in a second, is in line in doing the right things. And then finally, just staying out of their way and making sure that it's very convenient for the media and everybody to cover it and just kind of go about their business. Well, it's kind of hard for the UF media right now because what are they going to talk about that's positive? Anybody that I talk to in and around UF, they just, they laugh about them. Every single guy, and I know a ton of people that cover UF, do not think Florida is worth a crap, will be worth a crap this year, and they have no idea what the direction of the program is. Not one. I have friends all across SEC and ACC programs that cover them. I think it's the most negative group, and it's rightfully so, because all the things the administration has done. So let's talk about the NIL, which I'm sure many of you are curious about. This is just what I've been told by multiple people. 
the whole thing with Rashada and all that, I don't know how much money was up front and et cetera, but that was stupid. They didn't even look at the paperwork. The administration failed. They didn't find out all the details because they were basically hitching their wagon to Rashad. Okay, well, that's fine and dandy, but you need to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. It's not their contract. It's I get it. It's somebody in the Gator Collective or whichever one it was. Doesn't matter. They didn't know what was going on. How would you not know with your star pupil? That is malpractice on any level. That is poor management by the coaching staff. That is hilarious for anybody else, including Florida State fans. Here's another example. I have also been told that if Billy wants a player, whatever player it is, and there's NIL going to be involved in the decision-making for this young man, he has to go to a booster or boosters, whatever it may be, and say, I want player X, we need Y for money. He doesn't just get a sum and figure it out. They have to agree on it for each guy, which if that's even 1% true, that is the definition of failure if I've ever seen it. Recruiting is about speed. You need to move immediately. You need to move freely. And you need to move with the ability to get it done right now because the coach is in charge. The boosters cannot be 100% in charge, even though it's their money. I know that's an awkward thing to say, but they cannot. To that point, I understand their point. Like, y'all screwing this up. Why am I handing you money freely? Somehow they still got to do it, though, because the kids think that there's a booster that's more in charge. It really mitigates how much say a coach has after the kid gets on campus. Like, they're not going to trust him as much if they don't think the boosters trust him, which they don't. So – Whenever B Billy gets fired, and he's going to get fired this next season probably, not saying he's a bad guy or anything, but he's just failed, this is something the next head coach at the University of Florida absolutely has to fix. It is a disaster. They have to have a pot of money that the coach makes the decision, period, not the booster. Sorry, that's just the way it works in recruiting. If you want to be a 500 program, continue on this path. If you want to be a program that's made fun of on a Florida State podcast, continue on this path. If you want to be a program that your own media members make fun of you constantly, then continue on this path. You're going to fail. Their NIL screwed up so much last year, they lost elite players down the stretch to Auburn and other schools because they weren't all in line. They weren't offering the right money. They were not getting things agreed upon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can pick anything you want. It's different for each kid, but they didn't get it done. They're not on the same page. And sometimes you get outbid too. I get it, but they're not on the same page and that's not helping the cause. Florida should never be in that place. State U in Florida, SEC tradition, championships, the swamp. It is ridiculous that UF is in this spot. And to be honest, I would like to see Florida be a lot better. It's better for college football when they are. Because when Florida's good, the rivalry with Florida State is better. And of all years for Florida to be good, it would be this year. I'll give them credit, and this is the last kind of thing. I'll jump ahead here. They have a really unique schedule this year. They play Florida State every year. Okay, that's cool. It's a great rivalry. They also play Miami to open the season. They also play UCF. They get three games in state. I mean, I don't think any team's ever done that. So I applaud them. Their administration planned. Planned. Like they went and just like this is the Spurrier era or the middle of the Meyer era. High expectations, which they should. Well, you also have to do the right things to put your guys in position to make that happen. One of which they haven't worked with the boosters the right way. Obviously, I brought that up with the NIL. They're not bringing in the right head coach. They're not bringing in the right boosters, whatever. I, I don't know the whole deal. Obviously, I'm not behind closed doors, but there's problems. This is going to be an ugly season for UF because they play 11 teams that are in the prime time division one at power four, if you will, because it's not power five anymore football. Even if they win some of those games, more attrition, the roster is pretty good, but it's inconsistent. They're going to slide into mediocrity on the back half of that schedule. By the time they play Georgia, I will be surprised if Billy's still the head coach. I hope I'm wrong because it would be better again for college football in general. I know four state fans won't agree with this if Florida was better, but I don't think they're going to be here. Are the other other main reason that they've struggled when the administration's bad and coaching hiring's bad, 
quarterback usually goes sideways, and it has. Now, last year, towards the end, it was it was pretty consistent, but they just didn't throw the ball down the field very much. They didn't trust things, et cetera. Maybe they'll do better this year, and they did sign DJ Lagway. But I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. I'm sure some other guys on Florida Pods have said it too. If Billy gets fired, DJ gone. They will be in the dumpster once again. Remember I said that. Take it for what it's worth. Please like and subscribe to this podcast and share it wherever you can and comment. I'm happy to talk about anything I talked about today. Reed Vance, the transfer portal, Florida State Secondary, and Gator Hayden. So with that, everybody have a great day. It's been Locked On Seminole.